Hey guys, I'm Mel and this is my friend Rosie. She's come all the way from Cardiff. Hey! <laughs> and I hope you like her hair. The day is going to be like a mental health talk. Uh, you guys know what I'm going through with my bulimia, depression and anxiety and whatever else is in this mind. <laughs> so this is going to be the video on Rosie's story and how we connect and how our friendship actually is more than just going to see concerts and that because we like we connect on visual stuff we connect on mental health sides we can talk to each other about any everything like i haven't seen her in like well two years now haven't i yeah the last time was at a concert and i think just her if when you hear her story and where she's come to today you'll realize like how much she's been through like i'm not saying like what i've been through is nothing but when you hear her story, it makes you realise how lucky, really. Like, I don't mean that in a bad way, but... Well, she's a brave girl. But you are too, so do you want to tell your story? Yeah, okay, so I'm Rainbow start? Rosie, and I call myself that because, well, I just, I'm just a colourful person, I expect myself through <laughs> <laughs> a bit of an eccentric character, you know, I don't care what people think anymore. So basically, um, I'm 27, and when I was uh, 13, uh, like, turned a teenager, I, that's when my mental, mental health journey started. I, uh, I um, was diagnosed with bipolar. I was put into, like, a hospital um, for teenagers. And then, um, basically, I was diagnosed with also emotionally unstable personality disorder. Um, can you explain like what that is to you? Like so, what? it's like kind of like bipolar is basically like another way of saying it is like mild depressive. So it's like very extreme mood swings. Uh, yeah, like it's you know you could be like it's just very and then the personality disorder is like kind of very kind of it makes you kind of unstable, like emotionally unstable. So like affects your emotions, affects your moods. It's an extreme thing to have. Um, a lot, um, yeah, so I was basically in hospital, I've been in and out of hospitals now for the last 14 years of my life, so a lot of my life was kind of taken away by that because obviously I, yeah, I didn't get to have an education, didn't get to have a normal life really, but then, um, um, yeah, I've kind of, like the the longest stay I was in was a secure unit when I was seventeen till I was twenty one, and I was there for four years. So yeah, that was kind of like a different world, like a war zone kind of <laughs> like. Can yeah. you like describe what it was like in? You don't have to. But... It was like it was like another world. Like you're just locked away from the world. You have no communication with the outside world. No phone, nothing. You know, so you're just like kind of like in a, a kind of ward with like people that. Uh, potentially some of them some not all of them some of them potentially violent you know there's always stuff kicking off and all that kind of stuff it's just a very chaotic place um and i was you know there was times where i was put on a one-to-one -one observation had someone watch me all the time and for myself harm obviously because i'm not a risk to anyone else but myself but anyway so yeah i managed to get out of there and then i went to a care home so I've been to a few care homes since then. So yeah, basically I've literally like been on a journey uh, through the hospitals. Uh, I've had to kind of fight for my freedom. Yeah, uh, basically, yeah, be, like obviously I fight for my freedom like for the last fourteen years. I've had to kind of rebuild. For, yeah, but li living in these care homes is uh, it's not really care homes. It's like supported accommodation, so you have. Uh, your own flat and then you have like support workers who are in the building 24 7 uh, 24 hours a day so even though it's still kind of a bit quite restrictive uh like in some ways to compare to other people like who have more freedom it's a, it's a it's, it's probably the best situation for me right now and to get where i am now is a good thing because actually like it's so much better than hospital and uh, i hate hospital like i spent too long in hospitals in and out all the time long periods of time i've been sectioned because i have a high suicide uh, risk really? but i'm autistic it's helped me to realize who i am and 
the bipolar, the emotionally unstable personality disorder, they'll always be there. Uh, but I'm, I ha I've been, I've never been able to work because of all these illnesses and stuff. So I've been basically in hospital for 14 years straight. But now I'm living in a support accommodation and things are getting much better because I'm making a change and basically, um, yeah, I've started to go to some mental health groups to meet, meet new people and, well, to, just to keep busy and to do something productive with my time because for a lot of time I was just sitting in my flat doing nothing, even though I had the freedom. It was, yeah. So basically my story is hot. Like obviously it's a long story, but it's hard to like, like yeah, say so 14 years of, li of your life, like, you know. So like, but, like, what have you learned from being in that hospital? What, what can you say today? Well, I would say that being locked up for so long in a hospital and in and out for 14 years of my life, I reckon it's taught me that to appreciate my freedom and to appreciate things more because, uh, you know, I had a lot of it taken away when I was... Just 14? When, yeah, like oh, 13, yeah. 13. So when I was obviously... Because you were very limited, like you said, you didn't have a phone, you didn't, like... Well, I, I just, I've never had, it's never been normal for me. Like, it's always been like... Like like that, like a roller coaster, but I think that's how it is. But like, I think like with the um, hospital side of it, that has been my main purpose is to stay out of hospital because I've had so many failed suicide attempts. That's probably why I've ended up in hospital so actually, so much more because of that, because of the risk to myself. But now that I'm coping better with that, I think I'm just trying to, you know, slowly step by step you know find some find you know the, it's hard to find a purpose in life is it? that's it, it yeah it, it's purposes you don't have to find a purpose you know straight away no. but you can just find things that you know keep keep you going and stuff so yeah. so like when we were talking last night about mm -hmm. it you like we said where did you see yourself wh when like today a year ago from today where were you okay so a year ago today i was actually in hospital so and then after that, like in March time last year, I moved to a new flat in, in Cardiff. So I've been living there now for nearly, so it'll be this March, it'll be nearly, it'll be a year. So yeah, I was in a different situation this time last year. So I've actually progressed quite a lot in the last oh, year. Well, a lot. Like, yeah. like you said, like this is her first, well, is it your first trip alone without staff? Well, it's my first trip alone since since 2017 yeah well there you go that's a huge achievement to come travel down all the way from cardiff to um, traveling for let's just say four hours down on your own then coming to a new place staying in a hotel that you're not used to what was it like did you have anxiety did you um a little bit of anxiety but i think it, i'm used to having that kind of that feeling of anxiety because it affects you, you, you know, you, you, that kind of palpitation that kind of goes with the anxiety, doesn't it? Like, yeah. But nothing like really that major. I think I was just more, more exciting. excited than anything because I'm seeing Mel. <laughs> but it's like uh, yesterday we, because it was raining and it's still raining today. We still have not <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just went to Chester and we just found like different things to do. We were filming a lot and. Uh, we thought like doing a mental health talk about Rosie's side of the story was good just to like see like where I am. I have freedom, but in my own little way, I'm trapped inside my own mind. Like yeah. you are. I I'm sure like many people with mental health or not with mental health, they have their like own prison. Because like with my seizures, I'm scared about going out like to a new place on my own. But like... I hardly go into town by myself. Like, I never go into town by myself because I don't want to injure myself, really. Like, I could fall to the floor and hurt my head and, you know. But then, like, I was watching, I think it was Home and Away the other day. Home and Away the other day. So, <laughs> like, uh, a person on there, Rafi, she has uh, seizures. But uh, one of the characters mentioned, like, 
his brother had seizures and uh, he hit his head and then he died. So oh that really affected me. So, I like, think, when like, I met Rosie, I felt like I was meeting someone who had more experience and I can actually go to her. And I'm not saying, like, my other friends, I can't go to them because I can. And I absolutely love them and I love you as well. But to have someone there who's been through what she's been through is, like, it makes you realise how lucky you actually are. And uh, it makes me feel like I can have someone to talk to anytime. But then... Anytime. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, we grew closer as a friendship because, like, I can connect with her on the depression side, but then we tell each other our stories and then you can learn something from that, like, each of us. So, like, you know, it's just really sharing each other's stories and having more under an understanding of each other so yeah that was basically your story really so yeah. thank you for coming down and thank you for doing this video with us it's been amazing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but, so, um, oh, so should we do yeah like that hope you enjoyed this video a bit different uh me kind of interviewing you really <laughs> so <laughs> ciao <-cha. laughs> <laughs>